The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets in negative territory to kick things off. Right now, you got the S&Ps negative by 12 points, trading at 44.63, NASDAQ 100. You're off about 48 points. That's about a third of a percent, trading at 14,000. 457, you get the Dow off a third of a percent as well. Russell off three points. Jumping back to the S&Ps, you look at the action yesterday. We got Fed minutes. You talk about some volatility, man. You spiked to 44, 44, 50. Jump up, just missed 4,500 by half a point. And we end the session at about 44.75. There's your end of the day. Overnight, we basically make it right up to where we were for that flash high at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And since then, you've seen a little bit of a sell-off, 44.64 in the S&Ps. Uh, we'll see where we go on the open, folks. 23 minutes until that opening bell. Commodities, crude oil, quite the dive lower yesterday from 104 to 96. That's an $8 move, folks, yesterday. Uh, right now, you are positive by $1.30 on the session at 97.53. We had a 95 handle earlier this morning on crude. Gold contract catching a bid up $10, we'll call it, at 19.32. We jumped to notes and bonds. We got the 10-year yield right now, folks, 2.63%. 2.63, my goodness. 30-year uh, mortgages, right? Crossing 5% for the first time in a while. Higher yields coming at you, man. Fed minutes, they're talking about it. We'll get into that a little bit later. We'll jump into it right now this morning, and we'll jump into unemployment claims. 166,000, quite a number. Uh, the previous number also revised down to 171. Let's see if they get into it in this article. I believe they're going to. Come on, where's your revision? Now, they don't even talk about it, but there was a revision. So last week's number was about 200, I think. That was revised down to 171, which is why they say it's a decrease of 5,000 to 166. Uh, week ended April 2nd. Market was looking for about 200,000, low number, but it makes sense. And the thing I always say on this Thursday number is, folks, we're talking about 30 to 50,000 jobs on a weekly basis, okay? Uh, it's a normal churn, but there's a lot of variance when you're talking about that few jobs deciding the difference between whether you're swinging from 170 to 230 to 240. A lot of variance right now in this market on a weekly basis, um, but the trend is just lower numbers. Strong job market, people not letting people go probably at the rate that they would on a historical average. Continuing claims for state benefits rose marginally to 1.52 million. That is a week delayed, March 26th. The drop in first-time applications, yet another sign of positive momentum in the labor market. They've been falling for most of the year, along with declining COVID-19 cases. Um, separate report last week, jobs, you're talking about almost a half a million in March. So the market takes that. Uh, it goes with it at 8.30 in the morning. And really, the slide to negative prices began at about 7 a.m. Uh, there's 8 o'clock in the morning, so you see not really reacting on the jobs number. The market was already selling off from the highs we had pre-market of 44.96.75. Man, just like that, you give up 30 S&P points. We were in higher territory. Not so fast, folks. Lower prices uh, coming at you on the open, at least as of right now. All right, what else are we going to jump around to? Mr. Warren Buffett. He's got a new billion dollar, $4.2 billion stake to be exact in HP. 121 million shares of the computer maker. Uh, HP stock surges on the disclosure of Berkshire's purchases. Now, I wonder if uh, Berkshire filed the, the correct regulatory forms in time, as opposed to Mr. Elon Musk that likes to flirt all the regulations. We'll get into that, folks, uh, as you look at the amount of money that Musk made after he was supposed to be filing those regulatory filings. Nonetheless, Berkshire's HP bet, just the latest uh, way the billionaire's investors firm has found a way to deploy some of its near record cash pile. I read an article last week that was talking about Oxy and saying, you know, he's built a position in Oxy. Is that going to be one of his next huge ones out there? Now, which one is, uh, 
the HP that they're talking about here. HPQ is the HP they're talking about. Whoops, HPQ, and of course you're going to see a pop from 35 to 39. You were size 4085. We put this back on a three-year weekly. I mean, you're getting in at some pretty lofty levels, but nonetheless, Buffett, a believer, he puts $4.2 billion into that stock, and uh, you're going to pop about 10, 12% on the open at 38.88, and you're pushing right near the highs of 40.37. You put things back on a 15-minute, 40.85. We got above that high pre-market. We're trading right now 38.85 in HPQ. As I get everything uh, set here and what we're talking about, <coughs> still got a little bit of a cough I'm battling. Uh, nothing to do with COVID, thankfully, but just a little bit of a cough. I'll be dealing with it, but we'll get through the program. All right, let's jump to Mr. Elon Musk, man, because this one is quite quite a revelation. So a uh, story comes out from the Post last night. Let me pull this one up. That Mr. Elon Musk made about $150 million by not filing the proper regulatory forms. Okay, Elon Musk delayed filing a form and made $156 million straight cash, folks. By delaying his disclosure of his stake in Twitter, Musk bought at an artificially low price. All right, now the bummer of this all is I talked about it yesterday, I talked about it a couple days ago. They're just starting to talk about it with articles coming out. But even the financial press, it's so tantalizing. You have the richest man in the world taking a stake in Twitter. Twitter makes its own headlines as well. Um, nobody is talking about, and this is a great article, and hopefully they'll talk about it a little bit more, how he just flaunted the regulations that are there to protect consumers. Musk was aware, okay? And if he wasn't, then that's his own fault. He was aware that he needed to file regulatory filings. Okay, he was aware that the moment that that became public, the stock was going to skyrocket. And so he didn't file them and he kept buying. Okay, on March 14th, he had a 5% stake in the company. Ten days from then, he is required by regulations to file a form alerting the public that he has a 5% stake in that company. Okay, now, if you look at where he bought, okay, when he went from a 5% stake on that day, March 14th, he continued buying to the tune of 4.2% additional, okay? But the share prices jumped 30% the second the market figured that out. Well, they should have figured it out on March 24th, the day he should have disclosed it. The amount of shares he purchased after that time, it was like free money, folks, all right? Everybody else doesn't have that opportunity. Now, I went into the actual forms here, okay? And here are the actual shares that he purchased. Begins on January 31st. This is the SEC filing, Schedule 1 of Elon's transactions, okay? Begins on January 31st, 620000 at a price of thirty six eighty two. Now, let's get the dates exact. I believe it was March 14th that he hits 5%, okay? Let's get the dates, yeah. Reached on March 14th. He should have filed by March 24th, and if you look at the numbers that he did after that, folks, you got 3.5 million shares, 2.6 million shares, 2.8 million shares, 2 million shares, 2.1 million shares. Uh, you add all that up, folks, and you add up the fact that Twitter right now is trading at a price tag of $50.77, basically free money. He's getting a 12% pop in there. The real bummer of this is, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, uh, is that basically he's probably just going to pay a couple hundred thousand dollars in fines. Doesn't make sense at all. Hopefully it gets a little bit more attention there. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but we'll be coming back first, and we'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by nine points right now. NASDAQ 100, negative 34. Dow off 106. All the markets sneaking back into the red after being in positive territory over the last two hours. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, folks. Walk you through the trading activity going on. Walk you through hypothetical trade setups on the Thinkorswim platform. They're talking defined risk, talking options. Kevin Hinks, man, another wild one yesterday. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, that was it. You know, the Fed minutes... We, you and I talked earlier in the week that it was going to be explosive, and it was. I mean, some of the comments were pretty interesting. Uh, you know, many members were calling for a 50 basis point increase at that meeting. Um, so they're going to reduce the balance sheet quickly. Uh, they're going to work on, you know, getting the, the, the Fed to a neutral policy. Not the worst thing for the markets, not the worst thing for the overall economy, but... Uh, you know, it, it was everything that we thought it would be when Lael, Pre Lael Brainerd sort of preempted it on Monday. But, you know, today's data, Tommy, jobless claims, you know, just crazy numbers out of, out of the first-time filers for unemployment insurance. So 202,000 a week ago, revised down to 171 this week, 166,000. That Those are historic, Tommy. And so, you know... The overall market is starting the day very tentative, right? It, it, it was green. Now it's slightly red. So this is going to be an interesting day how this market consumes and digests, I always use the term, all the data that we've seen in the last eight. And here's something for your viewers to realize, Tommy. Look at the 10-year note and the RSI on the 10-year note and the corresponding RSI on the 10-year on, on yield. Way oversold in, in the 10 year notes, way overbought in, in, in the 10 year yield. So I'm going to be really watching how the 10 year note and the corresponding 10 year yield acts over the next several days, Tommy. You know, it's a great point. I got the chart up 
just Kevin of the tenure, not with the relative strength, but just literally looking at a chart on the Thinkorswim platform on a daily basis. You back it up to last August, and I had a pretty well-defined channel on the tenure for lower prices and higher yield, uh, and the tenure just smashed out of that to lower prices, man. And even if it gets back within that channel line, Kevin, I've been talking about it, I mean, that would be a pop to like 124 right now from 120. I don't know if we're going to get there, man, but that is still within a downward channel for higher yields and lower prices but boy that move you back it up march 7th we had a 129 handle and we almost got a 119 handle yesterday so boy you talk about moves man uh we jump from that the jobless claims number you've said it many times pretty remarkable kevin with the revision as well what do you think about the fact it's quite a market when you get such good economic numbers like that jobless claims number, like the non-farm payroll numbers that we've been getting, right? And then you have to do this kind of balancing act in your own head of, okay, the economy is so great. Okay, hold on a second. Does that mean the Fed is correct that they can really bring it with a couple of 50 basis points, if not three, if not four, like City was talking about? How do you encounter, Kevin, when we have hit these really robust economic numbers but the market almost takes it and says, hold on a second, that's great that the economy is so strong, but that is just giving the Fed a little bit more room maybe to bring it with these rate hikes. What do you digest when you look at, and maybe not even a number like the jobless claims number, which may not be as important, but the non-farm payroll numbers, just strong numbers across the board, but the market a little bit wary of such a strong economy that might give the Fed more room to raise those rates quickly like they've indicated. Yeah, I think, I think this market is so focused right now on inflation that it may not be realizing that we've got a pretty good overall u.s economy here that is frankly giving jerome powell the uh slack that he needs to raise rates and not have to worry about anything like the recession now a lot of people are taking the flat yield curve a lot of people are taking the imminent fed rate hikes as a sign that uh, a recession is on the horizon well, interest rates are still historically very low. And I think if interest rates were to plateau here, like yields, like they, Tommy, the, the, it, the, you know, the 10 year yield at 2.6, that's a lot of interest rate hikes already priced into the market. So I think it's going to be real interesting how this market reacts to some of that and how the market reacts. What happens if two months from now, we're still at a 2.6 interest rate or, or 10 year. I think that could be very interesting, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, that move, when I just talked about the price action on the 10 year, we had a 129 handle on March 7th. And I believe that's where the yields were talking about almost 1.7%. And we're almost a full percentage point in exactly a month. It's April 7th, convenient enough, March 7th, 1.7%. We're at what, 2.6% right now, almost a full percentage point over the last calendar month. Pretty remarkable, man, uh, to say the least. We move on from there, Kevin. We got Earnings coming out to some small trickle, but they really kick it off uh, coming weeks. What are you guys going to be chatting about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Yeah, we're still kind of in that chasm between when um, last earnings season stopped and the next one begins. So today we're going to look at the March sales data in Costco. In the first uh, segment of the show, we're going to look and trade Costco. Like Folio is going to do a presentation on the streamer Roku. And then we're going to look at, because it's the first day of the Masters, and because that also corresponds with opening day in baseball, we'll look, at, we'll look at Dick's Sporting Goods as a nice proxy for all things sports going on right now, Tommy. So Costco, Roku, and Dick's Sporting Goods. Some great companies, man. Costco, uh, boy, quite the charge higher, man. I got a weekly. Let me put it back to a daily. Yeah, yesterday, that's an all-time high, I think, 586, 80. Some of these companies, folks, pay attention. If you're making new all-time highs yesterday, you're worried about this market. Walmart, similar action, Kevin, yesterday making all-time highs. Roku, I've been looking at this one, man. Just from a, a standpoint, when I jump over to the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform, I got the fundamentals up there. You're talking about a company, Kevin, valued at only $16 billion. Now, $16 billion. We know, my goodness, I would love to create a company worth $16 billion. But in terms of the reach they have, and I can't wait to see what Likefolio talks about, because I've seen them talk about um, Roku before. They have some great insights. What do you think about a company like Roku? And I'm just going to talk about the market cap at $16 billion, because I always think about this company. 
it's got to be at least something that some of the executives think about for some of the big streamers, whether it's Apple, Amazon, Netflix, having the reach of having those set-top boxes for only $16 billion. Is that something you ever think about, Kevin, for, for maybe it just might be an attractive level for some of those big streamers out there? Well, you know, it's hard to, you know, with, with the naked eye and without someone doing deep analysis on Roku, it's hard to figure out if this company is changing uh, television overall, which I think there's a pretty good chance it is, and is it just something that could get passed by by the bigger carriers and the bigger, you know, this you know this stock has gone from 490 Oof. to 98 bucks before yeah. it settled up here. So, um, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of uncertainty still with Roku, but this is a company that is still growing. But this higher interest rate environment, as you know, they, they, they took a lot of valuation out of these companies. It's a tough question, man. I appreciate giving me the answer, and it's just something I think about. And you're right. I'm biased. Yeah. We got five Rokus in my house. So, Kevin, thanks for the there talk, man. We look forward to the program today. Have a great one, man. Thanks for having me on, Tony. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an Apex Predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and we got markets open, and basically right where we were pre market. Russell 2000 climbing into the green right now, but you get the SP negative by nine, trading at 4466. We're coming down right near the lower portion of where we were yesterday, uh, about 10 points from the lows, whether it was yesterday, all day. 
We had a low of about 44.57. You did have that flash low right after the minutes were released. Right now, trading at 44.68. NASDAQ 100, negative by 32 points. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading this morning. Amazon, flat, 31.74. We jump over to Google shares, down a quarter percent right now. Microsoft shares, down three quarters percent right now. We jump over to the big dog, Apple, barely in the red, 171.49. Let's see how Tesla's trading, up six tenths percent at 1052 we jump over to twitter shares hanging about 50 bucks at 50 56 i'm going to finish the conversation on twitter real quick because man it's just not fair folks and if the richest person in the world doesn't have to follow the regulations uh it's really unfortunate because people were harmed by this this is what i i you know i feel like i'm harping on it by continuing it people were harmed by this okay Elon Musk had inside information that he was about to come public with a huge stake in Twitter. He was supposed to file a regulatory filing 10 days after he amassed a 5% stake. He did not do that. He kept buying shares. Those shares that he purchased just after the March 24th deadline, okay, netted him $156 million. He bought those shares from somebody, folks, okay? And somebody sold him those shares with less information than he had. And imagine being the person that sold shares in Twitter after the date of the regulatory filing was due. I would feel wronged, justifiably so. Um, the disregard for security laws, whether intentional or accidental, yeah, highlights the way, obviously, Elon feels like he doesn't have to follow the law. Uh, regulation, okay? Different regulation law. It's a, it's a close one here, okay? Um, now, what they say, though, is that He's going to get basically a slap on the wrist. Security lawyers and finance experts say uh, that if, uh, nope, that's not the one. Let's scroll down here. Oh, come on. Yeah, there's a lot in this article. But nonetheless, he's just going to get a fine. I'll choose the exact one, but... I hope it gets more attention because people were wronged and it's 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 unfortunate that he's able to do that and get away with it because he has such fanfare. Now, one thing I'll look at, okay? I mean, check out some of the, the shares that he had traded here. Uh, I was going through some of these dates in particular. Now, February 7th, okay, he bought almost 5 million shares at 36.51 February 7th. I mean, he had a huge, huge portion of some of the biggest volume days out there on this stock. We zoom in on the action. He started buying it late January, February 7th. Twitter did 22.7 million shares. Musk accounted for 5 million shares of the buying alone. Pretty remarkable what he was doing in the equity in terms of just the raw amount of shares he was purchasing. Uh, and look at how it just chopped around between about 32 and 38 up until March 18th. Uh, he was supposed to file March 24th. He took those five extra days, folks, got it done and made a freaking $150 million for doing it. And they say that he may just get fined a couple hundred thousand for the act. Unfortunate, to say the least. Markets, on the other hand, we're getting some growth stocks accelerating. The Dow's turning negative. Let's go back to a 15-minute chart. There's a pop for you. The NASDAQ 100, green by 13 points. Dow turning a little bit red, 34,241 right now in the Dow. All right, what else do I have pulled up here? Let's jump to commodities. So we know the commodities have been running, but JP Morgan says get ready for 40% commodities rally in a market shift of man for inflation hedges may boost allocations. Raw materials hit record last month following, as we all know, the Ukraine invasion, but they're seeing potentially 40% taking them far into record territory should investors boost their allocation to raw materials at a time of rising inflation. It's very possible, folks. While allocations appear to be historical, above historical averages on commodities, they're not very overweight, according to a uh, strategist led by one gentleman, can't pronounce that name. Uh, that suggests scope for great gains in raw materials even higher than we're at right now. Just keep it on your radar, folks, because uh, the run may not be over. We got crude back below 100 bucks, but not sure that one's going to last as well. Yeah, in Puerto Rico, man, they were talking about this in the den this morning. Uh, boy, some real power issues going on in Puerto Rico, man. There was a fire at one of their plants. Basically, the whole island was plunged into darkness overnight. Some of it's coming back online. 
um, tough situation. They got some serious issues going on down there, and hopefully we get that figured out um, because that's a tough deal, folks. And uh, they're Americans down there. And if that was happening in an American city, I don't think we'd be allowing that to happen. Uh, but nonetheless, unfortunately, it's happening. And that's because they don't have representation. And they don't have people that um, they put into office that get to speak for them. It's a real bummer. And they're paying the price for it continually uh, down there. Um, but yeah, boy, you, you saw a chart of the, the island that they put into the den this morning. Basically, just darkness across the board. All right, what else we got going on? Speaking of the den, folks, we've been talking about it. Please come check out the new Tiger's Den over at Discord. Outstanding service. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. We got, folks, 88 active Tigers and Tigresses in there right now. We got over 200 members of the Tiger's Den. Those are just active members in there right now. It's a dollar for the year. That's basically just keep out spammers uh, and the likes. And... Next Wednesday, folks, we got an opening call subscriber webinar going on. Now, two different avenues, okay? You got to be a subscriber to the opening call to attend Basil's live webinar coming up on Wednesday. But that webinar will be taking place in Discord. The cool part about that is that uh, we previously used Hotcom. That was a great piece of software. Became a little bit outdated for what we were doing. Discord just on the cutting edge of technology, folks. If you want to access Basil's webinar and you are a subscriber, you can access it via your desktop, via your Macintosh, via your tablet, via your mobile phone, just sitting there hanging out in the living room, watching Basil's charts live, watching him speak on your phone. Very cool. I encourage you to check it out. Open and call subscribers out there. <coughs> Uh, you can attend this for free, of course, as an opening call subscriber. If you're already a subscriber, you have nothing else to do except for the fact that you do need to become a member of our Discord server, okay? We sent out an email to opening call subscribers yesterday, uh, and here's what I'll say, folks. Don't wait. Sign up now. Basil has an outstanding newsletter. You get 30 days of his newsletter. If you cancel, you get a money-back guarantee. You want your money back. We refund it. No risk. No risk. No questions asked. You get your money back. You get to attend the webinar. And it's a perfect time to do it because I don't want you to wait because normally, okay, people love to wait, folks, okay? I'm the same thing, all right? You get, you wait. Maybe it's Monday. Maybe it's Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday rolls around. You say, you know what? I don't want to miss that Basil Chapman webinar coming up tonight. Well, that's great. Just please don't sign up at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, April 13th. You can do that. Uh, but it's going to take us a few minutes to get you into the Discord room, okay? What I encourage you to do, sign up for the opening call, check it out. We'll get you in the Discord room. You'll be in there. You'll be a member of the opening call. Basil's got a number of outstanding archive webinars you can check out as well. When you click over to subscribe, folks, you can either pay $149 for the month, $695 for six months. That's a savings of 22% or $1195 for the year. If you're thinking about staying on, Money back guarantees for all of them. So I encourage you to check out the six month of the year. You still got 30 days for money back guarantee. Stay tuned, folks. We'll right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets sketching a little bit of a bid right now. S&P is in positive right now by four points. NASDAQ 100 holding in the green by 35. Russell positive by three. Dow barely in the red right now. But the Dow, you look at the pop we just got, folks. You were down to a low in the Dow, 34,209. You just pop 130 points in the Dow. We jumped to commodities, crude. Kind of hanging where we were pre-market, 97.60 right now. We jump over to gold, up 10 bucks at 19.33. We jump to those notes and bonds right now, a little bit of lower price. You get the 10-year, just above 2.6%. We jump over to the VIX, 21.96 after hitting after hitting 24.78 yesterday. Uh, talk about some volatility, folks. Let's jump to some of the stocks that are moving this morning. Conagra, weaker than expected forecast for the fiscal year ending in May. The results are being hit by higher transportation and raw material costs. We jump over to Conagra, see how they open. They get it all back. What's up with that? Whew. Look at that move, man. From 3420, uh, basically, yeah, down to 3247. We got a conference call beginning as the market opened for Conagra. You spiked to 3478. Now, this makes me think of, as Kevin was talking about, folks, if you're looking at, look at this, Costco, up 2.3 percent today uh there is a rotation going on in this market folks and you're seeing it happen live uh 2.3 percent people are flocking to stocks that they think might be okay uh as we possibly have some recessionary tendencies or indicators going on we jump to walmart look at that pop same deal folks uh if you had stocks with a higher yesterday pay attention to them you got walmart up another nine tenths percent to 156.31 <coughs> Excuse me, I think McDonald's may have been higher yesterday. It was McDonald's, Walmart, both stocks we have in my newsletter, folks, Rocket Equities and Options. If you want to try it out, check it out on the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. I'm uh, going to have an update out for subscribers later today as well. Uh, I do have equities that have not fared as well over the last couple of days as well. But those are two equities. Now, you take a look at a, a daily for Walmart. Let's back it up even further to get the full run this thing has had. I talked about this on a couple other shows. All right. Nice area in Walmart that this came down into, an area of confluence. You take the lows of the COVID lows of 124 all the way up to the high of 271, okay? And that gives you a 382 area of about 216. And then you take the smaller time frame Fibonacci from the run that began in March at 202 up to 271. That retracement zone, the 618, is about 228. Now, what I've done is I've highlighted the area of the 618 to the 382 of two different Fibonacci retracement zones, that is an area of confluence, folks, okay? You have two different retracement zones, and you have an area of confluence that lines up, and what did it do? Walmart comes right, I mean, excuse me, McDonald's comes right down into that area. They bounce basically almost to the dollar. At 216, you're up to 251. We'll see how they handle. But jumping back to Walmart shares, <coughs> we're breaking out of a consolidation, folks. And Walmart, from the COVID lows up to the highs, now it just broke above those highs. 
and I believe that high was 153.66, dating back to where we were uh, in, excuse me, November of 2020. Basically, chop around for the better part of a year and a half almost. Really, you got into that area in August of 2020, and just like that, we've accelerated out of it. And boy, if you ever get a move, folks, I mean, you're talking about an area that could potentially see a move of about $50 from 103 to 156. That's a $53 move. If you add 53 onto the bottom of that consolidation, you're talking about 185 to 186 potentially on Walmart shares, but strong numbers on Walmart. And that's even as we have red across the board right now. Russell, uh, yep, there it goes. Russell in the red as well. Let's see Constellation. Yeah, look at this, man. They're loving Constellation too. <clears throat> now, Constellation just had their numbers. Okay, now we'll get into those. But Constellation was higher yesterday coming into that as well. You're up another 3.4% for this equity, man. You take a look at the weekly. Uh, basically, you could say consolidation as well. Okay, now we've had some volatility here. But this thing's been chopping around between basically the better part of 2021, almost the entirety of 2021, and 2022. Can't believe it's already April of 2022. Uh, but we're coming up to the upper portion of that 240.07 constellation up 3.5% today. Uh, the wine business, the beer business, it's a good business to be in, folks. All right, what else we got going on? Levi is out with their numbers. Beat estimates by four cents, quarterly profit of 46 cents a share, revenue topped as well. Strong demand for its jeans, tops, and jackets while successfully raising prices and cutting down promotions. Uh, they're a little bit higher pre-market. Let's see how they're trading. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Uh, not so much. They give it back. There's your acceleration down 1.9% for Levi, even as they're able to raise those prices. Strong numbers last night, uh, but the market gives it back on the open. Right aid. Okay. Uh, Deutsche Bank downgraded them to a sell from a hold. COVID hastened the decline of the retail pharmacy segment, and there's a possibility that Rite Aid may not be able to generate enough earnings to continue as an operating company. Whoa! Did you get that one, folks? That's quite a statement. They might not even be able to continue as a company. You're down 21% right now. Uh, we jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a market cap, folks, of only $370 million. That's like nothing, man, for a company like this. Well-known company. But yeah, how do you compete with the big giants out there in terms of pharmacies and uh, COVID accelerating a lot of trends? And the trend might be out of business for this equity. We put it on a monthly. Uh, so much for 1,022. I imagine there's a few splits in there potentially. And yeah, this thing's just been chopping around since basically 2019 at these prices. Got all the way up on 2021 to 3248. But be careful, folks. $370 million. Uh, that can be at zero in no time, especially when you got uh, Deutsche Bank coming out and saying, guess what? Sell, sell, sell. Wayfair is lower as well. They get a downgrade. Underweight from equal weight. High-end furniture retailer is going to be hurt by waning demand, overly optimistic consensus estimates, and other headwinds. We jump over to Wayfair. That was a COVID darling up to 369. You basically give it all back to where we were at the beginning of 2020, actually under those prices right now. And think about it. You are trading at prices that you were seeing almost in 2017 in Wayfair. Okay, in 2018, you make it to $100 in February of 2018 in Wayfair. <coughs> Excuse me. And we jump over, it makes me think of Restoration Hardware. Uh, if you're looking to get in Restoration Hardware, folks, that might be an attractive level. You're right at the 618 of this equity. You're up to 744. You're back to 331. A super high end retailer, even if we hit. Some recessionary tendencies. I think I saw somebody talking about this, uh, an upgrade or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, I saw somebody talking about it. Man, they were just making some some good points, saying, listen, they are a very high-end retailer. You know, if the economy really is struggling here, they might be in one of the better areas, at least, where the high-end may not be hit as hard. But boy, you already pulled back, but I always like when you're at the 618, 330 right now, right at that 618 area down from 7044 for Restoration Hardware. And always nice when you got Mr. Buffett on your team as he is an investor in Restoration Hardware as well. Continuing down the line. Let's see. 
Yeah, JD.com, interesting. So the founder has left uh, the chief executive officer position. Um, just interesting, nonetheless. Built that thing into a powerhouse, man. I think it's a $95 billion company still. JD.com, founders checking out. I would check out too if I was in China, man. Take your money and run. Uh, no interest in that one. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got one more segment coming up in the program. S&P's negative by two. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Checking in on the market. We're oscillating in both directions right now. That's a monthly. Check out the monthly, folks. You think, you know, not, you think this market can't pull back? My goodness, from 2008. I mean, I was thinking about this last night. 665, are you kidding me? We're trading at 4,500, let alone COVID lows of 2174. We're trading at 4,479. Barely see this pullback, uh, nonetheless. What else we got going on, folks? It is Master's Day. Pretty sure I had it up. How did I close it? Maybe I did. Uh, did I close it? I must have. I had him up here. Uh, Masters, they're already kicking it off. Mr. Tiger Woods, uh, he'll be playing today. Pretty remarkable. Uh, who's in the lead? Let's see. Padraig Harrington. He is in the lead. Two birdies back-to-back -back on three and four. He takes the early lead in the Masters at two under. What I will say, folks, 
the Masters. I, I, I love golf. Uh, I don't watch it that often, but you can't go wrong watching some of the Masters, man. Uh, some of the majors, especially the Masters. And boy, if Tiger is ever in contention on Sunday, man. I was chatting with friends today saying they'll probably have Super Bowl-like ratings uh, if he ever gets it done. We'll see. He's dealing with, I mean, he's remarkable he's back after he had that huge accident. What was it, a year ago, a year and a half ago? Um, huge damage to his leg, and he's back playing, let alone he's the only guy that's ever won I think a tournament after getting that spinal fusion that he had going on, just amazing stuff. And if you haven't done it, uh, the Masters app, amazing app, folks. They they were ahead of the curve. It's been amazing for many, many years now. You download the Masters app. You can follow along uh, different pairings. You can just be on the hole you want to be on. They have a number of different broadcasts in terms of you can follow the pairing you want. They follow a number of pairings it's really cool check it out i usually download it for the masters and then i'll delete it on my phone on monday because i really only use it for those four days today kicks it off masters pretty cool uh will be interesting to watch to say the least but before we get there the market is interesting to watch folks we got some oscillation in both directions you got the s p right now back to positive territory nasdaq positive by 31 dow negative by 142 stay tuned folks we got a man basil chapman he's coming up next folks you got three minutes till Basil does his opening call, uh, the top of the hour update. In that time, you can head on over to the front page of TFNN, sign up for the opening call. You'll be ready for Basil's webinar next Wednesday. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Thursday.